All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Cybernary's Mod Spot Review of Thumbcraft 4 or something like that. Uh, I am Cybernary. This is episode 4 of Thumbcraft 4 Tutorials. Um, last episode, we talked about alchemy and everything that you need to do to put to start saving your essentia into jars as opposed to saving it in your wand. So today we're going to start talking about uh, Infusion Altar. And like I said, I will be showing everybody where we're at uh, in s different sections of um, the uh, the Thaumonomicon. Uh, under Artifice is where we're going to be working today. And inside of it is the Infusion section. The Infusion section talks about how to to make a runic matrix. It also talks about how to make an arcane pedestal and how to put it all together to make a runic altar or infusion altar. So to start off, we're going to talk a little bit more about the arcane stone block. Uh, we talked a little bit about it um, at, during the alchemy when we were making our alchemical furnace. Uh, it does take um, eight of the smooth stone and any one shard of any of the primal uh, essences and it takes one ingus and one terra in your wand to make to create this recipe this recipe will create nine blocks though of arcane stone so what can you do with arcane stone well as you saw last episode we did make an arcane furnace additionally you can use the arcane stone in a small crafting grid of 4x4 to make arcane stone brick just like you can any other smooth stone uh, here's a couple of cool things that you can do with arcane stone you can make using arcane stone brick uh, an air and an earth uh, essence shard and some essence in your wand from that shard you can make paving stones of travel now this recipe will make four of these paving stones of travel what's great about them is that if you have a long distance that you need to travel you can put these down and they will instantly give you speed two and jump to whenever you're using whenever you're on top of them so if you were to be sprinting it can in definitely increase your your travel speed jump to and speed to so that's what the paving stones of travel do very very helpful say if you've got a nether hub or if you've got a long distance to run in the end to like an ender uh, grinder or something like that the other thing we've got is the paving stone of warding now what this does using ingus and order shards and 10 of each of that essence in your wand you can make four of these and you can create a uh, a pin per se of uh, animal or that um, any vanilla mobs can't get out of okay regardless of how hard they try uh, they're basically not going to be able to get out of this because the magic it's basically a magic wall that prevents them from leaving. Uh, you can use this to keep mobs out of, out of your base. You can use this to keep mobs inside a mob trap. You can use this to to build animal pens like you see here. So uh, you can walk through it just fine. It doesn't affect you at all. Uh, so that's that's a nice little uh, thing that you can do with uh, paving stones of warding. All right, so you will, to make an infusion altar, you will need several arcane stone blocks. You'll need a couple arcane stone bricks. You'll need a st arcane pedestal or two. Actually, this recipe will make two, but you'll need a couple. Uh, the, you'll need one to start off with for the one in the center. And then as you see over there, I've got several around my bigger altar over there. And then last but not least, you will need a runic matrix. Uh, any primal shard can be used uh, four arcane stone blocks and then an ender pearl and then 40 ordo it is uh, quite expensive uh, when it comes to that but this is kind of the brain of the infusion altar all right assembly let's start off with a three by three pad like this it can be bigger but this is the bare minimum put yourself a pedestal in the middle Surround the pedestal with four brick blocks. On top of those bricks, put uh, four regular stone, and then 
kind of hovering over the altar in this spot right here you'll want to put your matrix now uh, the way I've often done this is I get uh, some dirt or something like that build myself out something to, to place that on and then there you go that's that now to uh, to complete it it's not actually done right now we need to uh, I'll make one more here to show you what you need to do to activate the altar and I need me a pedestal I need me a couple of these and again you can any way you can get it up there now what you the to activate it you're gonna need a wand uh, let's just make sure we've got ourselves a full wand here this is a wand that's got a hundred hundred of each viz and let's check the book just so you see I believe it takes 25 of each essence yep 25 of all six essences in your wand to be able to activate the uh, the altar uh, and you'll be able to tell when you activate it because it'll go like that the four pillars will turn in turn kind of curved and the the matrix will turn purple and start spinning around like that so that's what it looks like when it's been activated so very very simple does take a little bit of time to get set up but um, that is the steps needed to to make it uh, now as you can see this altar is quite a bit bigger than the the altar that we made down there and there's a reason for that as we get into some of the more complicated recipes like this right here uh, for using the infusion altar you'll need slots around the altar or pedestals around the altar up to nine or ten for some of the more complex uh, uh, items that you'll, you'll want to make with the altar so for that for that reason uh, I've made one with uh, with uh, well a lot with 16 uh, this is probably overkill you probably don't need this many but um, you know too many isn't a problem not enough that's a problem so uh, the other thing that you can do is you can make uh, candles and you can also put skulls and crystals down around this altar uh, the book talks a lot very a lot about how altars are very unstable um, at, uh, anytime you're infusing the level of magic that you're talking about here into uh, objects uh, some things can go wrong and uh, some a lot of the times the the objects that are on the pedestals will get knocked off because there's lightning and earthquakes and stuff like that now the um, we talked a little bit about uh, we talked a little bit about taint and what how flux can get into the world and create uh, tainted atmospheres and tainted biomes this is another instance of if things go wrong and objects get knocked off while it's in the process of making things and if it's sitting there rumbling and it can't find the items or the viz that it needs to um, to make to finish the the process then it's going to start generating taint because uh, it's basically magic gone awry um, now in like I said in here it does talk about things that you can do to balance that out and that is kind of decorations um, there's a lot of different uh, items that you can put well not a lot of different items there's three there's candles there's skulls and there's crystals and those are the three things that it likes seeing candles skulls and crystals to reduce the instability of the different recipes um, now if you put enough items around your altar you'll never have any instabilities because uh, you've got an, enough balance in the positive that it will never go far enough into the negative to, to knock things off uh, and I'll explain that here in just a second uh, skulls can be zombie skulls skeleton skulls uh, if you happen to have uh, be a beheading mod on your on your game then it could be creeper skulls or even player skulls uh, candles we talked about how to make candles in the last uh, chapter with the uh, with the crucible and the magic tallow uh, I guess I didn't actually show you how to do it but it's uh, two magic tallow and a string to make three candles and then you can dye these candles to make uh, different different colors um, and then last but not least was the crystals uh, something that we talked a 
very briefly about at the very beginning was uh, the crystals or the shards that you get uh, when you're breaking the infused stone. Well, you can combine these shards into crystal clusters, which are uh, mainly cosmetic, but you can use these crystal clusters for um, to add to your decorations around the altar uh, to reduce the instability when you're making uh, some of the more powerful things in the mod. Now, uh, one last thing I wanted to tell you about the instability and how to set up the decorations around your altar. Uh, the altar reads everything from this pedestal out and the distance that it can read is actually a lot bigger than you would think. From this pedestal up, it scans 10 blocks. Yes, 10 blocks above this pistol. pedestal, it will scan. It will also scan 12 blocks out on both axes uh, from this pedestal. So basically a 25 by 25 square around this pedestal it's going to be scanning. It will also scan 5 blocks down underneath this pedestal. So knowing that, you can build yourself a very big area with a lot of items that will cancel out the negative effects. And what I've done is do just that. I've built an area underneath this that have a whole bunch of candles, quite a few skulls, and that makes my altar very stable. Now, not as stable as it could be. I am not using the full potential of the, my space. Uh, as you can see, I'm only three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks out from the altar itself, and I'm only three blocks down. So I'm still within the area where it's scanning, but imagine that if you took the full 12 blocks all the way out here and filled those with candles all the way around underneath your altar. Now if you were building your altar on solid ground and you had lots of open space underneath, you might as well do it. Candles are very easy, easy to make. You saw the machine that I set up before in the last episode about how to automate making magic tallow, and uh, you can make candles and skulls all day. You can add, just fill up a whole floor with crystals if you want. But I will tell you that having a stable altar will make uh, your um, enjoyment of this mod a lot more because you won't have to worry about instabilities and uh, and things falling off and uh, things going bad. So uh, that's basically that when it comes to instabilities and how to go about remedying them. How do you use the altar? Well, let's talk about that real quick. Uh, last, a couple episodes ago, we were talking about wands, weren't we? And we've got enough time now that we can sit there and, and finish up our wand discussion. Um, in the last episode, we talked about adding, uh, making, making these uh, alembics so that we can save essence into jars. And I did say that I've got this big uh, section over here that's got a whole bunch of jars. Well, what I, what the altar does is that it makes, it combines a whole bunch of objects and with some magic combines them all into one big magical construct. Now, it doesn't use magic out of your wand uh, like the, um, like the magical the um, the magical workbench does, uh, but it uses the magic out of the essence jars or the warded jars that you've collected um, to to perform the to, to build the item that you're talking about building. Now what I've done is I've used an item that we'll talk about a little bit later on called a essence mirror and the essence mirror allows you to uh, allows essence to travel long distances between two mirrors uh, and are an essential mirror and so using this you my altar here has access to all the essences that are over there in that in that uh, square. Now, until you can build one of these, you can just put your jars of essence around the altar so that it can draw it out for the recipes that you need. But uh, since I'm not going to be putting those jars around the, the altar, I wanted to at least explain that to you. Okay, so wands. Uh, when we last left off with wands, the best wand that you can make was a great wood wand with gold caps, right? Because anything beyond that was going to require infusion, 
and we hadn't you hadn't built an infusion table an infusion altar yet so I'm going to show you how we can make a silver wood wand core which will be a next step up from your great wood wand and uh, just so you know where we're at we did cover everything in this section of infusion we're going to jump back over here to thaumaturgy and you should uh, the silver wood wand core is what we're going to talk about now this is the recipe page that will show uh, infusion recipes um, and as you can see this recipe here takes seven different items plus the central item uh, now the way I've chosen to display those is these gray uh, boards that I've got here and um, as you can see some recipes only require three other recipes require more I, uh, some recipes take all the way up to 10 items um, the order that you put the items around the altar aren't as important as making sure that you have all the items and you have all of the essence in the jars that it needs so that there's no cause for instability and no cause for it to break down and mess up okay so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here we're going to grab uh, all of our essence and we've got ourselves some okay we need to grab some salt which we talked about uh, in episode one um, salt is a pretty easy recipe to uh, to come up to, to do you can find it back over here in uh, uh, let's see not there in the basic research Nope. Okay, so I'm not in recipe mode. Um, but yeah, I can I can jump back and show it to you real quick. Just so that we make sure we got it covered. Uh because you did you did need to build it for for uh, for the primal charm. Oh yeah, there you go. It's the um, it's two of the essence uh, the essence droplets and one shard. Uh, it can be any kind of shard and any kind of essence to make the salt, and it does require quite a bit of uh, wand essence. So that's how you make that. Uh, but yeah, you'll you'll as you get further into the you'll need to make more and more of this for infusion okay so what what you need to do you need to place your central item right there on the on the center uh, we're gonna place down our salt and then we're just gonna put down these in a symmetrical order around our altar uh, remember symmetry is very important with this uh, just so that you have you cut down on any instabilities that you might need or might might run into uh, And then last but not least we're going to grab our wand It doesn't require any essence in your wand to set off, but it does require you to right-click on it to uh, Activate the essence or activate this the spell uh, at this point It's pulling all of the essentia from the jars over there through the mirror into the matrix and you can tell which one it's working on right now. It's working on Terra, and now it's pulling Ordo out. And then it's started already started pulling the Perdidio, and then lastly but not least is the Precantatio. Now, once you get all of the essence pulled out of the jars, it's going to start uh, de dematerializing the objects around on the pedestals into the wood or the object that's in the center. Now, at any time, you could have uh, vibrations or something that knock the items off the pedestal. You can go over and pick up the item off the off the pedestal and put it back up there, but sometimes the um, it will require some more viz or more essence from the jars to complete the uh, the to complete the the spell. All right, so now we've got ourselves a silver wood wand, and that is how you do a a typical uh, infusion recipe. Uh, place the items around the altar. Uh, place the central item in the middle. 
make sure that you've got the essential that you need in the jars surrounding the altar or connected through a mirror and then uh, right click on the matrix with your wand and you will be able to make uh, the object that you're trying to. Now uh, one last thing that I wanted to touch on real quick was uh, one more thing that's in the uh, artifice section uh, that's connected to infusion is the lamps. Um, now these two do require some additional scanning to unlock and I will go over that in just a second but the arcane lamp is a very good source of light that uh, you might want to consider for your base. Okay, it does require a daylight sensor, two iron block, iron ingots, a block of amber, which amber is the yellow, um, uh, this is the amber bearing stone, and when you break it, depending on if you have fortune or not, you'll get a piece of amber like this. Nine of these will make your amber block. Okay, so let's see, did I do that? I didn't do Sometimes I do that on the back. And then, of course, an, a piece of nitor. And we talked about how to make nitor last episode on in during the alchemy section. And if you have forgotten, uh, that's the, the one that requires a bit of glowstone, some um, some ingus lux and potentia inside a cauldron, and the catalyst is the glowstone. Uh, you can use uh, your alchemical construct machine to crank out a whole bunch of them at once if you'd like, or you just need one for, for this uh, lamp. Now when I say that this lights up a, an area of 16 blocks with additional light, what I mean is 16 blocks around this lamp will light up, but then if it detects other areas outside of the 16 blocks that it um, sees that don't have light, it will continue to light those up too. So it can be attached to walls, floors, or ceilings and will provide strong and steady light. Additional sources of light may also appear up to 16 blocks away whenever light levels fall below accepted safe levels. Remember, only you can prevent zombie outbreaks. These secondary sources of light will disappear soon after the lamp has been removed. And, of course, there will be additional... Um, really? Oh, yes, I remember that. Uh, I had I, That's arcane board or something we'll talk about a little bit later on. So, to demonstrate, I have put a couple of lamps, arcane lamps, out on the out in the field there and I'm gonna make it nighttime real quick and as you can see the areas the light continues to expand beyond where it additionally got placed just to show you an example I'm gonna come over here where it's really really dark and I'm just gonna plop this down initially it lights up the small area but then very uh, quickly it recognizes the there are areas further out that are, shall we say, spawnable, and it starts filling those in with additional light. So, kind of a nice addition. It does make sure that it, it is makes the full 16 by 16 blocks around it spawn proof, uh, and is a very, uh, very potent uh, light source. So, something to consider besides using torches. So. Uh, let's see, was there anything else? Let's run over the rest of the wands real quick now that we've understand infusion. Um, the Thaumium wand cap is uh, the one wand cap that you cannot finish making without using infusion. You can create it using the five uh, Thaumium ingots on, a, on an arcane workbench and we talked about that recipe a couple episodes ago. But to activate it you need to put it onto an infusion altar with six arm and twelve potentia and that will activate one wand cap. You'll have to do that twice for a uh, for um, you have to do that twice for both sides of the wand. We talked about the silverwood wand core. This is probably your go-to wand while you're playing Thomcraft through the bulk of it until you get further on into the stabs. The stabs are the more uh, the more um, beefy, I guess, when it comes to using wands. But as far as the arcane workbench, uh, this is your primary wand because you can't put staffs in a workbench. 
Uh, next comes the six primal wands. Now, the interesting thing about these primal wands and the primal wands that we're talking about here are... Oh, I didn't go over those two. The primal ones that we're going into here are surrounding the uh, the Great Wood Wand Core. Uh, they represent all six of the primal essence. Um, the Icy Wand Core represents uh, Aqua, and it will autofill your wand to. It'll make sure that your wand always contains at least ten percent of Aqua. Um, the same thing goes for. Uh, the quartz wand it autofills ordo up to 10% uh, the obsidian autofills terra the uh, reed wand core autofills air the blaze wand core autofills what you guessed it ingus and then of course the bone wand core is perdidio so those are the uh, six primal uh, wand essence or primal wand cores that you can make again you can put iron copper gold or thomium caps on any of these and the prices will still remain the same uh, we talked about a what a great wood would cost uh, we talked about what a silver wood would cost and then of course these are the primal wands all six of them are the same in price um, and they start off with a uh, Viz cost of 6 for iron, 12 for copper, 18 for gold, and then of course double gold for thomium. 36 essence of each of the 6 Viz type to put together a, say, a blaze a wand with thomium caps. Okay, um, real quickly, I'm going to bounce back over here to the lamps. Actually, I'm going to bounce back to the start because there's uh, an interesting uh, little thing that you got to find out about the the um, where did I put it? Oh, lost research uh, about the um, about those lamps. Anytime you see any of these uh, these symbols that are kind of a yellowish. Those are lost research, and you have to scan a certain item to unlock all unlock it. The lamp of growth, I believe, you have to scan a piece of wheat, or um, or is it seeds? Seeds is the growth. Wheat is um, fertility, I believe. So make sure you scan seeds and wheat and you'll unlock both the lamp of growth and the lamp of fertility. But these are the, these are most of the, if you scan most of these items with your thermometer, you'll unlock almost all of the, um, the, the lost research. Interpol, bow, uh, some kind of taint, taint biome, string, arrows, leather, wheat, seeds, fire bat, zombie brain, iron and a primal focus and you'll make a primal focus you will unlock primal focus by holding a primal charm in your hand so let me jump back real quick over here to the rest of the wands and the um, the lamps these lamps are very very powerful uh, the lamp of fertility if you hang that up over an animal pen they will constantly try to breed uh, makes it f for a um, a very uh, useful um, useful farm, and we'll talk about that in a little bit later on when we get into the golems. Uh, this is how you build it. You do need an arcane lamp before you uh, uh, before you build this one. And arcane lamp, as we saw, was just a workbench, and then you can infuse this together to make uh, uh, a lamp of fertility. The lamp of growth does the same thing except for plants. It will it will make plants grow faster the more the lamp of growth, uh, more lamps of growth that you have around your uh, plants. Um, uh, if you provide it with herba essence, basically uh, putting a jar of herba nearby, then it will increase the speed and the light around the area. That much more uh, with for fertility a, a jar of victus uh, will 
increase the potency of the lamp so so those are the lamps and uh, they are they are very important and they do come in very very handy uh, and I'll show you how uh, later on as we get into more of the automation uh, last but not least let's hit these last of uh, the uh, wand foci that we weren't able to talk about before on um, because we needed to go over infusion uh, when we last talked about foci we talked about uh, the normal ones or the, the, the easy ones to make fire uh, excavation frost shock equal trade uh, and then the primal um, the next one we're going to talk about is the portable hole okay the portable hole say is a a way to escape when you get lost in caves or something like that say you've been caving and you know that the way out is up well you just uh, right click on that and that will make a hole through blocks uh, until it gets to either bedrock or skylight now it doesn't stay open for very long and don't get trapped in it when it closes up because then you'll start to suffocate but the portable hole can be uh, very helpful if uh, if that's what you're looking for uh, the next one is the warding wand and I don't think I actually have one of these in my bag so let's pull out my focus pouch and put the wand of warding in my focus bag and then if I hold the F key down I can pull up and activate my wand of warding say I've got a building that I don't want anybody to be able to break regardless of what they throw at it explosives uh, whatever um, I can right click on certain blocks and basically ward them from anybody being able to do anything else to them only uh, they are now protected from anybody but me being able to alter them so that's what warding is, is done you can as you can see it goes all the way through the block and uh, to unward you just right click again and you can remove the protection so one of warding very very helpful a little bit expensive nether star in the center obviously one of the more uh, full recipes with eight objects that you need to put out onto the altar and quite a bit of, of essence in the jars again just so that everybody's aware of where we're at we did jump back over here to the wands and we're looking at the uh, wand foci that require um, require um, infusion uh, infusion altar so there's the portable hole one that we talked about and then here is the warding that we talked about next up this is a hidden one you have to scan fire bats to be able to unlock this foci but it's called the nine hells and the reason that it's called the nine hells is that it basically oops no I want this one thank you uh, and I will have to uh, switch out of uh, peaceful mode for this to work and spawn in some mobs because I can't target this um, no, I don't want anything blown up. Sure, we'll do spiders since they don't burn. Okay, so if I was to use this, then I can I can sit there and cast fire bats on my enemies. It can be pretty overpowered if you if you think about it but anyway that's why it's called the nine hells it takes um, let's see the cost is one air two ingus and one pretty dio so that's the nine hells uh, now moving on um, those are all the foci that uh, that are available in the game um, let me come back over here I don't need that anymore and put this stuff away uh, as you're using your wand you're going to need to find um, more and more of these nodes to be able to pull um, uh, I will need that wand actually to uh, to recharge it I used quite a bit of my 
uh, Ingus, let me see, I'm down to 30 Ingus, um, when I was doing that. I'm going to switch back over to, actually, I'm just going to take this one off because I don't want to accidentally set it off. Uh, now, normally I could just walk up to a node and charge it up that way. Well, using one of the, using the node preservation s steps that we talked briefly about over here in, um, in advanced node tapping in the very first episode, you can, with a whole bunch of glass, some slabs, and a whole bunch of viz, you can capture nodes and bring them back to your base and um, set them up around what is called a wand recharge pedestal. Now it does require um, a primal essence, some gold and diamonds, and one of the arcane pedestals, and that will make yourself a wand recharge station. It also requires a little bit of arum, permutatio, and precantatio. But what that does is you can come along and right click on your wand right on top of this recharge station and it will just slowly absorb the essence that's in the uh, that's in the uh, in the nodes around it. In addition to that, you can also put a compound recharge focus on your wand recharge station. And this one's a little bit more expensive. It takes four um, for the Essentia filters, for Earth shards, and a uh, comparator, along with um, quite a bit of a little bit of magic. And what that does, while this will pull essence out of primal uh, uh, nodes, any node that has a primal essence, the compound recharge focus will break down the essence that are in these nodes that uh, you normally can't access into primal essences to fill up the um, to fill up the the wand itself and this is uh, probably one of the more powerful staves that you can get it's called the, the primal uh, primal staff the gold banded primal staff and it holds the most viz that you can or essence that you can get out there it's 250 so I'll show you how to build that here uh, a little bit later but the wand recharge station pedestal and the compound recharge focus are both very very powerful in the sense that when you start capturing these nodes and bringing them back you can just plop your wand on the station and it'll slowly recharge itself using the nodes that are around itself uh, last but not least are the staves um, there's a couple different staves that you can make the great wood staff core is probably your first one it does require a um, primal charm along with two great wood wands and eight ordo to make the core itself. The silverwood staff core requires two silverwood staff or silverwood wand cores, primal uh, charm, and 24 ordo. And then any of the primal uh, wands. You can be made into stabs. Well, obviously, once you have all that unlocked, um, once you have the, once you have each of the wand cores themselves unlocked, the staff cores will unlock as well, uh, and they're all right there. Um, this the the price on these doesn't change. It's always 14 ordo and two of the core that you want, along with the primal charm. Now real quickly, let's talk about the price to assemble these into stabs. Stabs are the same as wands as far as the assembly cost. They start off with the number and add by that. Thomium caps are always double to what gold caps are. So if you were to make a great wood staff, which can hold 125 viz, iron caps would be 8, copper caps 16, gold caps 24, and thomium caps 48. A primal staff, which can hold 175 viz, Iron caps 14, copper caps 28, gold caps 42, and thomium caps 84. Now, a silverwood staff can hold 250 viz, iron caps 24, copper caps 48, gold caps 72, and yes, thomium caps 144. Now, this staff with the primal can hold 250 viz, just like a silverwood staff, but it's a combination of all six primal staffs and it can regenerate all six essence up to 10 percent as you can see it's very costly to make the iron caps 
are 32, the copper caps 64, gold caps are 96, and then thomium caps are 192 viz on all six essences to assemble it with um, thomium caps. Now you may say, well wait, the most we can hold is 100 viz in a silverwood wand with thomium caps. And you're correct, but the more discounts you get through armor and equipment, and the more discounts you get through enchanting your foci on an enchanting table, the better off you're going to be when it comes, the, the cheaper those recipes are going to be to uh, to make. Okay, uh, You will notice that um, as far as the stabs go, they don't require almost don't require any <laughs> any enchant any infusion something that I forgot to mint forgot to put on a board but I will show you now is the staff core of the primal this one does require a lot of essence in jars along with one of a core from each of the six primals and a silverwood uh, core to build the staff core of the primal now this isn't the one this is just the staff core Okay, and you'll need two of those, two of the staff cores to make the, oops, that's over here. Oh, no, that's, I'm sorry. Yeah, that does make the, the whole thing. Um, so I didn't, I didn't go into that when I was building this, and I, 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 that was just my mistake. I should have built another one over here that had the, uh, had that recipe in it, but, um, it, uh, it this is probably the the strongest wand or staff that you can uh, that you can build out there, and it's uh, there's a reason why it costs so much. It's uh, very very powerful. Has a whole bunch of uh, uh, capacity in it for holding essence, um, and any node that you put on it is going to be extremely potent. Or node foci, any foci you put on it is going to be extremely potent. So I think that is about it when it comes to this episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed. We have covered quite a bit uh, in this one, considering we talked about how to build uh, a, a infusion altar, how to use the infusion altar, and then wrapped it up with some uh, some arcane lamps and how and finished up our wand uh, our our wand um, tutorial and all the different wands that are out there. When we come back on the next episode, we'll start talking about the armor and uh, weapons and, and other equipment that we can make using Thomcraft and the benefits that they give us over uh, traditional va vanilla uh, equipment. So I hope uh, you guys have enjoyed. I hope this has been educational for you and uh, all likes are appreciated. Now, if you haven't subscribed, please be sure to subscribe. Uh, episode 5 will be coming out soon. Uh, hope you guys have a great day, and we will see you again next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.